Hey, my name is Sherelle. I'm the host of Let's Talk the TV Show, and this ain't a podcast. Sorry about that, guys. Oh, it is. Oh, you know what? Sorry about that. DJ, would you go ahead and tap in so I could go ahead and request you? Today is just a uh, day is a very interesting day. Oh, hello, Mr. Good Boy. Hola. It's so nice to Senor. have you. How are you today? Say again. I said it's so nice to have you today. How are you? I'm doing awesome. How are you doing over there? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. So the rit the ritual is once you join um in with us. You have to uh, tell us something that you're grateful for today. Grateful for today because a lot of people don't take the time to say what they're grateful for. I'm grateful for uh, my health and my family. So okay. I can say that. Okay, I can dig it. So, yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. That's it. Okay. So we're gonna jump right into it. So, Mr. DJ Good Boy Detroit, famous Mr. DJ Good Boy. Um, let's let we're gonna go way back. So, tell us what was what influenced you to become a DJ? Why not a rapper? You know, why not a music producer? Why a DJ? I am a music producer and a rapper. Uh, oh, I have released right. songs with me, rapping on it. I have written many verses, and I've produced many different styles of music so i got at least over 100 produced songs on my laptop you know uh 10 of them have oh signal messing up what's going on here i do apologize you did break up a little bit there can you repeat that for me please which part <laughs> <laughs> You said that you have, yeah, yeah, let's just go. <laughs> I'm trying to make sure the signal gets oh, it's messing up there. Get better. I don't know what's happening right now. I don't need that. There you go. I see you again. Okay, I heard you say you have over a hundred, well over a hundred producer written songs on your laptop and start from there, right? Uh, yeah, I was just saying that that's what really got me started with, um my my creativity and music is the the influence of my city really it's uh how i was listening to the radio 20 some odd years ago where you know they was live in the club and i'm i'm listening to what sounds like people having a good time and from what i also saw and experienced you know as a youth growing up when people would dance to these records, uh, I, I can't even think of the name of them or like how they go, but you know, when people used to just pop and- uh, Oh. Uh, all that, you know? Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, what is that the called? Streets. I don't know, I know all what that. you mean though. I don't... Yeah, so seeing that energy made me want to produce my own records and get people dancing as well. So you started really young, obviously. So. Does your is your family musically like in the music industry or do what is that like? Were you did you hear music throughout your childhood? Did you know were anybody in your family musicians? Um, my mom sung or sings at church, so <laughs> that 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 barely counts. I don't know if that counts. Uh, additionally, my dad he's a real big music connoisseur. Like he he listens to a lot of different styles of music, so pretty sure that probably had a slight influence on me want to be creative as well um but having an actual musician uh i think i got an uncle who played a guitar uh actually i got an uncle um well that's a cousin not really no but you got people that's, it's a hobby there's no professionals at all okay uh, actually there was a professional from like a cousin or something who was actually with motown wow and, and he actually passed away this last year 
last year, I think. So, but I didn't really even get a chance to to know him like that. So, you know. <laughs> Do you yourself play any instruments? I play the drums, you know, I play the turntable and I try to, you know, do my thing with the keyboard, but I'm not exactly, you know, proficient with it yet. Okay. Okay. So we're going to move right along. So you, you're growing up, you decide you want to be a DJ. Um, and how does music play into high school? I know a lot of times in high school, you, people bring about their passions. A lot of athletes come out, you know, start in high school, maybe it starts a little younger. A lot of rappers probably start middle high school. So where was music during high school? That's a very, you know, you're very impressionable at the age. What was music in your life during high school? Um, music was a hustle for me in high school. How so? So uh, this is 2004 or five. Niggas wanted CDs. So I'm making CDs for people. I'm on LimeWire. I'm downloading. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm downloading all of the songs everybody want to hear. Make CDs with "What's Up, Pippi." Uh, so that's pretty much what it was for me, and that's what helped me to, you know, curate how I was spinning as a DJ. Because you know, I had a lot of the songs a lot of people wanted to hear already because I was making their CDs. So that helped me to become a DJ as well. Okay, and so I, I love actually hearing about how you got your DJ name. So you did have DJ Demi before, and then mm -hmm. you moved forward to DJ Good Boy. It's, explain DJ to the Blue. people that don't know what Good Boy is. Explain to them what that is. It was actually DJ Demi, which was French. It was, it was a French word for half. So that was like my other half of me. It's like, you know, people okay. knew who I was as a person, but not a lot of people, you know, knew my taste of music and what that was about. So you got that and then DJ Blue, of course, Blue is my favorite color. And then Good Boy, which is Good Business Organized Intelligently, came about because there was a lot of people, you know, upset about how unprofessional uh, a lot of the DJs that were dealing with. So, you know, DJ Good Boy came from that. You know, just wanting to be the one DJ that people could trust and know to believe that if they're going to hire a DJ, if they're going to follow a DJ, if they're going to, you know, want to see a DJ, it's going to be good boy because, you know, he's good at it. And, it, you know, it's just together. It's tight. <laughs> okay. I like that. I like that. So we're going, so you're getting good business. It's organized intelligently. You, and then you hit, I told you what my friend said when they found out that I was interviewing you, that when, when I was interviewing you, they'd be hit rolling on our live. That's, remember I told you that? Where they at though? <laughs> Where they at though? So, so you got the work song. Tell me, tell me how how did that come about? And around what age were you when you made that? And you know how has that impacted your career? Because we all, I think, I feel like everybody in the city of Detroit knows you for that. Mm -hmm. So tell me, what was that like? Uh, well, work. Um, I guess I was either eighteen or nineteen when I dropped. So I have a video of me like previewing that record before I release it. You know, I was telling people about what was coming up and I was telling them about, you know, my new music that was coming out. And uh, I see myself in my parents' living room and, you know, I play the music on like some CD player or something. So I was, I think I was 18 at the time. So this is a, a record that pretty much jump-started my career, you know, like not even, um, I guess about a year after its release, a lot of people were used to seeing it in, in in male strip clubs. So a lot of the male dancers were dancing to it <laughs> at, you know, Watts Mozambique. Um, oh, me, I was actually getting my record out myself because, you know, I was uh, kind of getting next to some of the bigger DJs at the time. You know, I'm, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do as an artist, which is getting my record out, you know? So I'm, I'm handing CDs out to DJs. I'm, I'm trying to get them to play it while I'm at the party. Me and my friends at the time, you know, we dancing to it, we getting people familiar. Like, this is this is what we doing to this record when you play it. So, you know, people would automatically just know, like, okay, this is what happens when you play this record. So after a while, you know, it just, it kept evolving. And it was crazy because, you know, a lot of records, they come and go. You know, after a while, people don't want to hear them no more. They're just over it. But work, you know, it's just something that just is kept from staying relevant for whatever reason. I'm just like, all right, I'm going to go with it. You know, y'all want it? 
Y'all like it? I love it. Cool. Um, and what you call? We we talking like easily till today. You know, even today, people still just bat 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 when they, when they drop. You know that they automatic. They still today just like oh yeah, <laughs> all they little shit. So it was crazy. You know, and it's like I loved it, and it did exactly what I wanted it to do. Really, I I don't know if you understand how impactful that song gets, but we always talk about how Detroit culture influences the world. That right. is like, that I would like to say that is one of the songs that is like, everybody in Detroit knows this song. That is a, mm. it's etched in stone in Detroit culture. That is one of those songs that we ain't never letting go. We know where it came from. This is ours, can't nobody take it. And I mm. want to thank you for that because I don't know if you know how that song impacted the culture. Like, you can play that anywhere, and I guarantee if there's one Detroit person there, they know that song, and it's going it's to spread like wildfire. So do you ever think about, even though it was so long ago, and I like to think that sometimes when we're so young, we don't understand the impact that we have. Looking back now, do you, even, do you, do you reflect on the impact that that song has had on Detroit culture, or on the hit rolling, on the dropping? You know, like, men would hit rolling to this, you know? So do you think mm -hmm. about that to this day? And when you think about how black culture, influ I'm sorry, Detroit culture influences the world? Yeah, um, I, would, I, I even got to state that uh, men, I think, were, you know, the first, like, catch on to it, you know? Just because it was in strip club and then women, who go to the club, they would be like, oh, this is that. So, you know, I always try to spend my time handing out my flyers outside of that club. Cause you know, apparently I was one of the first DJs that was like promoting themselves and had actual flyers out. So, you know, I was going to all the venues that I wasn't yeah. performing at just yet, you know, just like let them know like, this is who made this record. And if you want to hear more from this person, book this nigga, you know what I'm right. saying? Like put two and two together. And I, I'm not, I always felt like you know, the two or two wasn't together. Like a lot of people either A, knew the, the name of the record or they knew my name or they just knew the song. And if I could get all three of them together, you know, then we'd be, be solid. So this is why, you know, even today I'm, I'm still promoting this record because it's like, hey, it's me. Don't forget, right. you know, your boy puts it together, you know, because it's hard for people to, you know, to like remember certain things sometimes. I, yeah, so. I agree. I think especially... I think especially around that time, I think nowadays it's so much easier to link one and two together. It's easy to be like, oh, this found it, and you just hit a couple comments, and you can easily find the name. Then you really have to do a lot more research as to who dropped what. And right. I think I, I really want, gosh, I just, I feel like that, I don't know why, I think that would be a really good TikTok. Like, the, I don't know. Do you, do you, you said I, what? It's the same time. I think work. In my comment section, viewers, tell me what y'all think. Do y'all think that work would be a really... I think that'd be a great TikTok. I don't know how you can get it on TikTok and what you gotta do. I know, right? But that would be the work challenge. You know, we are gonna work on something. We are gonna talk about this. And that's this. what I've been trying to do, too. Like, I've been trying to... I'm on TikTok, and I was looking up my name. I was looking up the song, trying to figure out what do I have to do to, to you know, get my song on there exactly. So... I feel like, you know, I'm going to have to start dancing on TikTok <laughs> with the hip rolling because you go, you go. It, didn't, it didn't come up as an option when I was, like, searching for it. I think, yeah, you got to, we got to work something. I like that. I just thought about that. I should I don't know why I didn't say anything about the dance. I think that's a really good song. I think it needs to be on TikTok. And I think you might, you, I mean, nowadays, the way, things that's, the way things spread so fast, and that song is classic. I don't care what anybody says. That song is classic. It's going to. It's gonna get the same emotion it got then. It's gonna get it now. It's, it's right. that song is fire. So shout out to you for making that because you put that on in my house. So all my friends gonna be twerking. We all gonna be hip rolling. But exactly, yeah. and that was crazy because it, it kind of it, it evolved into the twerking era too. Like it, I'm, I'm that song like, is like and you know what? Shout out to you for making a song that's classic and that's relevant across the board. That song is mm -hmm. gonna remain very relevant we can twerk we can hit roll ground work i don't know if you can ground work today probably can't so. yeah that's what i made the the follow-up record for work which is called freak me that was a record that i created for people to uh you know do their groundwork thing too that's why the, the beats sound like that so if you listen to it th there's a slowed up version there's a faster version so 
it's so many different ways you can, you know, have fun with it. I think I know that song. We're gonna talk about that later. You are quite the quite the character here. Let's see. So you got you you say you you told me you were a turntablist, correct? You're yeah. not just a and what is and what is that? What is a turntablist? A turntablist is a person that uses the turntable to manipulate records to create new sounds with. Okay. So not a DJ, is it more specified? No, it's just like a a channel of DJ, like you know, you got people in the medical field who do such, like you got pediatrists and whatever <laughs> other titles. Like, I don't, I ain't really so big, but you know, what I'm saying? like you got doctors, yeah, okay. like you got DJs that just play music, you got DJs that just talk, you got DJs that turn to them, you got DJs that do weddings, you know, just different categories. Okay, so um, upon doing research on you. You also do comedy and write poetry, which I think is every, I think, well, not every rapper is a poet. That ain't true. But you do poetry and you, um, you write, well, you do comedy. How did you go up right. getting comedy out of, out of music? How did that, or how long have you been doing that? That was just a part of my personality. That, huh? that came from me just being who I am. You know, like a lot of people, you know, found a lot of my retorts to certain topics to just be funny or just, just some, some of the way that I act, you know, just my goofiness or whatever it might have been. So that, that we talking about 2008 when I was first on a stage in uh, Ann Arbor. So I had my first uh, stand up uh, open mic experience at um, Ann Arbor Comedy Showcase. Okay. And that's in like 2008. So uh, shout out to everybody that's tuning in though, because I just, sent it to everybody and just come tune in real quick so i got a shout out uh mercedes and everybody else who on here right now but yeah uh the, the poetry this is something that i was doing since middle school high school you know uh just being a hopeful romantic and being somebody who, who really truly believes in love and grew up you know with the real good love songs you know um i love love so that that is something that transfers or translate into my music as well so speaking of of love and romance you have some very interesting views on on dating so mm -hmm. we've had this discussion before you i want to i love listening to it just because it's so different and then I, I love to just hear it so you believe in going from or dating to fiance no right. girlfriend boyfriend stage yeah, I feel like it's, it's basically the, the boyfriend and girlfriend stage is the fiancé stage. It's just that people want to commit before they actually commit. And I feel like that's where a lot of people see a lot of conflict because they're given husband and wife privileges to boyfriend and girlfriends. And it's like, you, you people kind of get caught up in that. So... Where okay, so where do you draw the line when it when you're dating? So your boyfriend, girlfriend, and at some point once you get to that once you get to the boyfriend and girlfriend stage, you say, I'm only dating you. This is who I'm involved with. So mm -hmm. if you're doing just the dating stage up until fiance, at what point do you say I'm only dating you? Once I once I give you a ring, that's when you know it's only you, or is it only you? How no, how you could always or how does that work for you? One then? person. Huh? How does that work for you then? It doesn't work for me because I haven't dated. I haven't dated since 2016. Why? So, said so why? Yeah. I had to step back. I had to work on some things that would allow for me to become a fiance within a, a appropriate amount of time. So. And what's the what? Do you have an appropriate amount of time? Do you have like a time frame? Yeah. I feel like about a, a year. About a year, you know, you can be able to say, oh, okay, I see what you're doing. I like where you're going with it. Let's uh, come together and let's do this. Okay. So we'll go back up just a little bit. Go back into the, this dating stage. So All right. tell me if I got it correctly. You're dating and at any point, do you let them know that it's just you two that you're exclusive? Yeah, you have to. I don't, I don't care what uh, stage you are in any relationship. You know, communication is important between two people when they, they want to understand each other more and better. So if you are like a, a multiple dating person or if you are like, oh, I only do one person, say that up front. You know, just let people know, like, look, I'm not trying to be a part of your uh, collection. I'm trying to be your one and only, you know, like, or 
as long as you know people are on the same page, that's really all of what it's about. You know, are are you dating to marry or are you dating just to date? You know, these these are things that need to be communicated first between people because I think a lot of people they jump into a situation and they don't fully understand where this person's head is and they assume and then you know they get hurt I because they didn't they didn't ask the questions that were needed to be asked. You know, they. And so it's all situation. Why do you think that is? Why do you think people have such a hard time saying up front or asking up front about dating? Because I believe that I believe that communication is key as well. And I also feel like you should ask those questions. But I don't feel like you need to ask those right away. I feel like maybe you should mm -hmm. just move along and just see where things go because I don't feel like you should just introduce things prematurely and then it just throw off the vibe and now you know everything's really chaotic. So you know, how do you feel about, when would you introduce that? When would you say, hey? Well, it's a little bit on. Sorry about that. When would you Huh? I'm sorry. I don't know. I'm having technical difficulties here. I apologize, guys. Oh, yeah, I was saying, uh, you had kind of asked a question before that, like, why do people have this problem so much? Uh, that was the first question you said. And I'm sorry, uh, I believe yeah. people, yeah, I think people had that problem a lot because there is this, belief that we have common sense and a lot of people think we all have the common sense and it's like no we, we all kind of got different senses and we assume like oh this person knows what i know or they were raised like how i was raised and it's like okay you didn't get a chance to understand how this person was raised were they raised on survival were they raised on love were they raised on how what were they raised on you know so how what is their interpretation of how love looks and when you understand that first, you know, I feel like you can start to understand a person even better and understand where your relationship can begin to grow to. I agree. I agree. I know we did just have a viewer here say that um, it is important to discuss your intentions. I do agree. I apologize. I didn't see your name there, viewer. I think it said Tiana. So, yeah, it is important that you do discuss your intentions up front. Um, I like to. I like to not do it so prematurely just because um, I don't want to say men can be men are manipulative, but anybody can be manipulative. But people can just take advantage of what you want and and right. see you down the line. So I think that timing is super important. I think that mm -hmm. you do need to communicate that, but you need to be aware of when you do so because you don't want to put yourself in a position that allows yourself to be taken advantage of. You know, right? Um, and we have a viewer say that's deep. Viewer, can you elaborate on what exactly is deep? I know we were just <laughs> we were just talking a lot there that came What's up, Ashley? Came in between. Um Paulette, Saina, yep. Tremaine, what's going on? Y'all in here check in. What's up? So we do um you said you haven't dated since twenty sixteen. So we didn't I might have been seventeen, seventeen, yeah. Twenty seventeen, you haven't dated. So yeah. three years. When 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 are you gonna start back dating, Mr. D? It was supposed to be twenty twenty. <laughs> but uh I don't think nobody yeah, does it in 2020. Huh? I don't think nobody doing nothing in 2020. But I mean, it's, it's still possible depending on, you know, the effort you can put forth, but based on how um, it's affected the economy and it affects how we travel and it affects where we eat, it plays a large part in how I wanted to actually move forward, you know. So it, it might be able to happen still, but it, it's so unsure now because of you know all of the different things that's being put into the equation right now so it's like okay love is on hold up here. i apologize here we are currently experiencing some technical difficulties bear with it here bear with it i can see no problem yet you know ain't nothing wrong over here something going wrong over there i'm seeing it you saying it's not loading sir oh man i mean it sounds good it look good over here i still see people so yeah I, I couldn't see you yours was loading oh um, but yeah, like Ashley said, you know, the kind of love people grow up on and how, how they date. Yep, that is important. And I think, um, I think that nowadays you're starting to see more people mention that. More people um, are talking about whether some people grew up on survival or whether people grew up on love. And I think that that's that's important. I know I see a lot of people, and I I, I hate the phrase "there's no such thing as a dumb question" because there are a lot of dumbass questions in the world. No, it's not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I never, I never believe. There are a lot of dumbass questions. And the one dumbass question that I hate the most is when people ask, do you think that people's childhood or upbringing affects the way they date? And I don't, I don't think that could be a more dumber question because of course it is. That's, I think that 
a lot of the ways, a lot of the things that you're taught in your childhood and the way you grow up affect you as an adult. So it only makes sense that it's going to affect the way you date, the way you treat people. A lot of that affects the way you treat yourself. So it's obviously going to affect the way that you talk to other people or you treat people in your relationships. And I think that people need to be more, people need to understand themselves, understand themselves more. I think a lot of people... I don't, I don't think it's... I don't think that's a part of the common knowledge, though, because a lot of people are people. People are growing to realize a lot of what happened during their youth is starting to affect their adulthood. Like people are, they are, they going to see therapists and they, they're seeing people and they're starting to learn. Like, oh damn, I was traumatized in some type of sense, you know, or something did happen to me when I was twelve years old that. No, I can't trust the person enough to allow them to love me how I want to be loved. And I keep pushing them away or whatever the case may be. You know, it's so many different things that's going on. So we got a viewer that said, being raised on survival survival versus love isn't as important as the love language. See, I'm going to disagree with you because before you can even learn to figure out how you interpret love, before you even get that far, I think that, that comes at the, uh, a point of you realizing more about yourself. Before you get that far and mature to that point, I think before then you're acting or you're dating based on how you think love is. And I think that, and I say that to say because a lot of people think that love is toxic. They think that calling your phone a bazillion times is okay. They think getting beat up in love is okay. They think that, you know, people being dismissive about how you feel is okay. And that's love and that's not. And I think that you have to, you don't necessarily have to go through all those things, but you have to learn to love yourself and, and reflect on what you were brought up like before you can even figure out how to interpret real love because you don't even know what you don't even know how to receive real love because you think that gets smacked across your head is love so i don't expect you to figure out how you really interpret love because you don't even really know do you speaking of love languages do you, good boy, do you know what your, your love language is yeah no i feel like my love language has been consistent throughout time uh but it's physical touch is like my my highest rated one according to the test uh, pretty much all of my, out of the five, four, three of them got the same rating. Physical touch was the top one. And uh, gifts was the lowest rated one with a, a scale of one. And if you look at the math on that, you know, I'm a very needy person. You know, it's like, I'm going to need you to tell me that you love me. I'm going to need you to show me that you love me. I'm going to need you to just be of service and, you know, to actually touch me, to you know, to actually so like, okay, this is somebody who I can move forward with. But as far as, you know, her comment, you know, being raised on survival versus uh, love, is I think that still plays a part into the love languages because they still, everything is still going to be included in the love languages. It's all about how it's prioritized, though. So when a person who's raised on survival, you know, their love languages are going to be prioritized differently than somebody who is raised on love. They're going to give it and show it differently. So... I think it's just all related. It's just different priorities on it. Okay. I can take that. What's up, Janessa? Um, so, let's see. I, I love my love languages. Mine is, uh, where's the affirmation first? Um, quality time is next, and then physical touch will be my third one. They all kind of mm -hmm. rank pretty close in, in the, um, the ratings or whatever. I did that so long. And it's crazy that when I originally found out about love languages, I thought it was I thought it was one of those. Um, I'm not a big Zodiac person. I don't believe in like Zodiac signs and whatever those are, water signs. So when I heard it, which was about eight years ago, somebody eight introduced years. it to me. A guy I was dating introduced it huh. to me. He said, what? I said, I was only, I'm about four years in with it, if that. Yeah, like I heard. Like, I didn't even know about eight years ago. Yeah, I remember him. He, I don't know, because there's like, a, I think it's like a couple books or something. He's like, you know what your love language is? I'm like, I don't know. And anyways, moving forward. But he introduced me to it, and I kind of like blew it off. And then as time has gone by, I'm seeing so many people be like, you know what your love language is? And I'm like, well, you know what I need to find out what mine is. I thought it was fake. I thought it was like the Zodiac stuff. I didn't think it was real. And then I'm like, oh, my God. I do know what this is. I think it's really important. Um... I think it's important that, like, I think it's important that people take the time to find out what that is. Mm -hmm. I think that that would eliminate a lot of issues in relationships. A lot of people, I do. I think that's like the biggest one that I think that's the you don't feel like I'm doing enough, and I think that comes a lot in with how people determine their like showing effort and love there. So if people learn the love language in a relationship, I think that can solve at least 
If it's 60, 65, 70 percent of problems in there. Yeah, because I don't I don't think a lot of people spend the time to learn themselves. No. Learn what they want, how it looks when they're doing it properly yeah. and, and just doing it consistently. Yeah. Like just stick to that. You know really if you know love lang your love language is like, okay, you can identify how much of this person is uh giving that to you and if you like how they're doing it, you know? I apologize guys, bear with me here just one moment. Uh oh. But while she doing her thing, I'm just go ahead and shout out my social media info. If you're not familiar, go ahead and follow me on everything at DJ Good B O Y. You know, check out my music on iTunes. Check out my podcast on Podomatic.com or through iTunes. Just look at DJ Good Boy on iTunes. It's gonna come right up along with my music. What else do I got? Uh, if you like to party, feel free to go to my website, sign up to my email list get you all the latest information so you can have uh, the free info, just, just everything that you need to know about what's happening, what's coming up soon. And what else, what else, what else? What y'all binge watch on Netflix? Y'all check in with me real quick to the, the couple people that's in here while we waiting on this. Uh, apparently a little bit of a production break while we waiting on them to come back. Yeah. Because I ain't just gonna sit here and just stare into the, the darkness. I'm gonna actually say something. So if y'all here, just just type, just type. We got a little chat room here, bro. Uh, I'm doing great personally. You know, even though I haven't DJ in officially a month tomorrow. Uh, this has been the longest I've been out of work since uh, I started in 2005. Like I've never gone a whole month without DJing. We talking about. Uh, a job that I've done on a weekly basis has been at a stop for about a week, so this is different for me right now. So Ashley says, let's talk about if having children ruin relationships. That was a big topic last week. Having children ruin relationships. Like, oh, 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 okay. Uh, say a couple been together, they've been single, they both single without kids. All of a sudden, you know, they having a baby. Now they're moving forward having kids. I do believe it is absolutely going to change the dynamics of the relationship because you're introducing new characters that additionally need uh, a different set of love languages from you. Uh, it's new responsibilities. And it's, you know, I'm not going to say ruin because some people, you know, they prepare for that appropriately. But, you know, it's something that you definitely need to prepare for and, and, and get your... your Whatever y'all responsibilities together, because people and kids like I, I already know for a fact. Me, when it comes time for that, I, I don't really see myself being involved with the, the infant process. I don't, I don't want to get shitted on. I don't. Please don't shit on me, future child. Don't shit on me. Uh, I don't want to touch the, the diapers, none of that shit. I really, <laughs> I really plan on having a nanny for like the first two and a half years. Like I really. I could fast forward past the boo boo shitty stage. I just want to like talk. When they can start talking and shit, that's when I can deal with a kid. Because I have a hard time dealing with people that, or dealing with things that can't communicate with me. Babies can't communicate. They don't listen. They can't listen. They don't understand what listening is. They don't know what words are yet. So I feel like it's going to be a conflict for me because I, I might be a little bit of a dick because they're like, this is a baby. Is I don't know. Uh, <laughs> What up, DJ Dark Knight? She said, do you think it could work out if it happens by mistake early in relationship? Absolutely, if they wanted to. Anything can work out if you want it to work out. Some people don't want it to work out. They realize, oh, I don't like how this person want to raise their kids. I don't like how they choose to neglect me and take more, of this, more attention to this child. You know, these are things you got to think about that may happen when people have children, people change because it's going to be a new dynamic. There's a third person, there's a fourth, there's a fifth person in between what y'all had going on. So y'all might want to watch out for that. Thank be you. Prepared. I do apologize for being asked. Absolutely. I'm going to hold it down. <laughs> oh, I heard. Trust me. Um, <laughs> good answer. Oh, they, oh, they was answering for you. Let's see what y'all say. Did you, did yeah, you know, they tapping in. They're here. They're ready for you. What else you got? What's the... So I'm sorry how because I, how long we talking about? Guys. Um, I do have a kid and we obviously can't take him to daycare, so he's at daycare here. So when Netflix goes out, um, mommy mode 
goes in. Oh my God. If, um, see, that's what I'm saying. Like, if I was a new parent, like right now, in this in this uh the state of society, like I, I would I would lose it. I'd probably lose it. I just let me out this motherfucking house with these motherfucking kids. Like I I'll be I'm I'm going out for a drive. I'm about to I'm gonna go for a drive real quick. I'm gonna be right back. I don't sure. I don't know, man. If your kid's bad, Bro. I feel for you. But I got a good like I always say I have one of the best kids in the world. Like he's really self sufficient. He don't need much, he don't require much, he's not really a crybaby. I need one of them. Uh, Just give me one of them. Really yep. blessed my kid. Like good behavior kids. And then it's all about how you raise them. If you only discipline them when they do something bad and you don't redirect them, then you know it's a, a bunch of things. But I do apologize. And DJ Goodway, thank you for be kicking in and being the, the great host that I know that you are for taking over because I did hear a conversation. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> I hope you guys do follow him if you ain't already following him because I heard him promoting. So make sure you guys do that. Let's talk Facetime dating. Mood and I've been in the game ten years. Facetime hey, dating? Sure. No, she's talking about with having kids, I believe. Oh, so, or having a child. Woo! So, baby, I'm dealing with kids, like well, man. They do. They kids. Do you want kids? I assume you want kids. You want yeah, kids. yeah. I do believe. I think at this point, I can still see kids in my future. Huh? You know, it's been debated. Like, cause I'm still figuring some aspects of me out it's just like okay do i want to be able to spend that time at which point in my life do i want to spend that time right and right now definitely ain't that point you know it's like i, I want to spend time hustling hustle i want to work i want to get money i want to go out i want to get out i want to be out i want to be out i don't want to i don't want to be on hold for nothing or nobody right now you know so it's like okay let me just do that let me get that out the way then you know let's introduce me taking care of somebody else into the picture then i can do that but right now, it's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I just want to complete, I do want to, you know, further my legacy. I want to, you know, bring more Faulkners into the world or whatever the hell. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I might be 50 years old with my first child, but what? Like, like too short, like too short or something. But it, it's, it might, it's, it might come eventually, you know. I, I hope sooner than later. No more children of my own in my future. No more. I feel I want more kids. I have one son and I want him to have a playmate because I just don't feel like you should leave your child in the world alone. Like I have a bazillion siblings, probably like 14 mm -hmm. all together, mom and dad, including my step siblings. Mm -hmm. So I, I just think about every day, like every day, just about my siblings come through for me on whatever it is. Like, you know, every day, like, you know, just because since the virus is hit, me and my sister, we go shopping for all of us. So everybody sitting their grocery list. We just go and get everybody groceries. And then so y'all buying up the whole goddamn grocery store. We do. And then like two weeks ago when I got sick or my son was sick, my sister and my brother went for everybody. You know, so I really just think about how important it is to have siblings. So I definitely want to bring one more in with them, you know, but I don't know about three. I, I pray when I get married, I hope my husband come with one. We can be a pre-made family. I'm all for blended, mm -hmm. baby. I ain't trying to do that no Mo, she said, I'll be figuring myself out forever. Yeah, you yeah. will. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you're a whole new person once you have kids. You're not even the same huh? person no more. You think you know who you are? Wait, you have a kid. You're not even, you're going to be like, who is this person? You're not even the same person. Uh, like, I've, I've kind of had, uh, like, a couple times, like, when kids come around, it's like, I, somebody said, I don't have to talk to kids differently than I talk to adults. And it's like, I don't, I don't feel like I can talk to kids the same way. I talk to other adults. You know, I feel like I gotta initiate safe mode. You do. <laughs> I gotta put safe mode on. Like, hey, little buddy. Hey, yeah. Like, like, army voice or some shit. Like I can't. I can't be like this with a nigga. Like what? Like, then you gonna go back to the teachers and shit and just be talking to them different. Like, and they they gonna look at him as a bad kid because I'm gonna tell them to question everything that damn teacher is saying. You know, like why? My parents. Why? Why did, why did your kid say why so much? You know, this is this is gonna be problems for me. I already see it happening. That's, I think that's definitely. <laughs> I think I was that kid. I asked why about a lot of stuff. I think my I'm gonna teach my son that. I'm gonna I'm gonna definitely teach my son that. You know, you listen to what makes sense. You you know you discern what makes sense to you. You don't just take what somebody say. You know. I don't. I don't never believe in taking nobody's word for it, especially not mm -hmm. most of the stuff they teach you in school. Because I'm realizing now it was a bunch of bullshit, and you know mm -hmm. it wasn't even true. So private or public? You know, you said private or public. Mm -hmm. I want public for the culture. I want private for the education. So I'm. Not, I want him to. I'm get, saying, your your upbringing. What did you? Oh, school I had. Um, I was public for it, and I think I would say my middle school was a private school. It was a charter school. 
and it was like a okay. choice, kind of like charter school. You had to like it was a real process to get into it. So I kind of went to like a maybe a, I guess a private middle school. It was a charter yeah. school, whatever. But yeah, I know my I know my middle school definitely made me a more well rounded person. I tell you that much, much you more than my, yeah, it did. Like we like the first time I was ever introduced to the stock market was in like sixth mm -hmm. grade. That's the first time oh. I ever learned. And I, I didn't know anybody else that knew about the stock market. And I was Walmart. That's what I was for the stock market. Teacher gave us all businesses. And everybody teased me because I had Walmart. All my other friends had Nike and stuff. And I was teased. But I helped. You know, I was a really well-rounded person due to my middle school. Dating wolves. Mm -hmm. Having a preference of dating men without children. I don't want more kids. They typically want kids to struggle. Um... Do I, I, I didn't that, that's not something you got. You got that one. That's all you, but I don't know. <laughs> Do I, 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 having a preference of dating men without children. I prefer, um, I, you know what? I don't have a preference. If you, if you do come with children, it, I ain't gonna lie. I can't be more than one or two. I, like, that's like my max. Just because, I mean, I do want to, I don't mind a blended family, but too many children is like, I don't even like that many kids like that. Like, I love my nieces and nephews, but I don't just like too many kids to begin with. So if you come with too many, I'm not really gonna like you like that. You gotta come with like one or two, and two pushing it. So if you can afford them, just go ahead and have. Them. You know, <laughs> if, if you want to raise you a whole goddamn kingdom, and you want to be Carter the fourth of the fourth, <laughs> and, and you want to have ten kids, and you want to have a prince and a princess and all that shit, nah. And you can afford it. Go ahead and do it. You know what I'm saying? But. For me, as, as a as a single man without kids, you know, it's like okay, I can or a child, and I could possibly have uh, a future in that if she's down for having more kids. Like they got to be my blood though; they got to be my my DNA. I can, so I can do if, if you're not having kids in the future, or you you done having kids, and you know, then it's likely we can't have a future unless you allowing us to bring a surrogate in. And the surrogate, and then now it's not you and your DNA, or what? I don't know how it works. <laughs> Wait, actually, with surrogates, they can do that, right? Like it'd be the mother and the the father, and it's just being another woman carrying. Ain't that how that works? I think I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I give not no false information. This <laughs> might go big one day. Yeah. I don't want to be out loud to people. I don't know. Yeah. I, don't know. <laughs> I ain't I ain't trying to raise a kid that don't have my eyes or my my laugh. Like I'm yeah. like I'm listening to my child's <laughs> laugh. I'm like, who the fuck laugh is this? That's from that <laughs> other nigga. Like I don't want to raise another kid with another nigga traits. You know what I'm I saying? Like I need my kid to have all my traits, and that's how I want to do it. You know? I can dig it. I feel the same way. Well, I mean, yeah, or our traits, me and her traits. Like, oh, you have. You have my wife's smile or something. Now you, now you got the surrogate smile. Like, what the fuck? I don't want that. You know, I can say that. Funny. I agree. <laughs> that was a mess. Nice you are so funny. Um, let's see. What else did I want to talk to you? I want else to talk to you about. Um, actually, we're gonna wrap this up in a little. But I did want to talk to you about Detroit's music scene, like. The wide variety that it is, yes. What about it? You said the what? The wide variety that it is, yes. What about it? Okay, so obviously I don't I don't hear a very wide variety. I hear I hear rap or hit and miss of um a a style of Brent Fayez and Bryson Tiller type. That's what I hear. I hear rap. You know, Bryson Tiller music in Detroit. You said what? I said, who's doing Bryson Tiller music in Detroit? I'll be just listening to the whole, like, clicking people profiles in Detroit. And they might not be well known. I don't even know their names. I just be clicking and hearing them. So I hear always rap and then a mix of Brent Fayez and Bryson Tiller. They're hit or miss of them. They're trying to be them and I can hear it, but it ain't oh. quite there yet. Um, but that's what I hear. I don't, and I hear the girls singing R&B or maybe a little girls rapping. But what yeah. do you think, what do you think, so what do you think about the current, state of Detroit music overall because I, I, I love it because it's it's a whole renaissance right now we get getting attention niggas see that we can actually do us and make it you know T Grizzly he changed Great. the fucking format he changed the program you see and hear yep. us and other artists now you hear Megan Thee Stallion rapping yes. on the hell of a beat bro <laughs> You hear, yeah. who would have fucking thought the number one artist in the country, female, maybe even in the country, I don't know, between male and female, but yeah. is rapping on a hell of a beat. 
yep. you know, a lot of people were saying like, we can never make it. Like that'll never go global. That'll never be national. I, I don't know if you, I'm sorry, you know, I'm out there. Did you have you heard her album? Have you heard the song outside I heard of the album? Yeah. Now outside of the hell of a beat song, there's another song on her album. Have you heard do you know I don't even know what it's called. Do you know what I'm talking about? And I'm she has the Detroit album. flow. I I think I posted it. I am gonna post after this goes up, guys. I am gonna post that Megan has a song on her album. And when I tell you, if I didn't know her or know where she was from, I think she was legitimately from Detroit because the beat, the I was like, oh my god. I think you might be talking about the first track, but I can't. I think it is the first track. Right yep, it is. Yeah, it might have been the first track. Yeah, I was like, what? Let's see what I can Yeah, but say. you say Detroit music scene is a popularity contest. It's more hidden talent than the people that's broadcast. Of course, always. I don't, I don't really think it's hidden talent. I just think niggas don't invest in the marketing themselves like that. That's I don't think. And then people, people are too, you know, people are too scared to be different, and they don't understand that a different doesn't always get you there right away, but eventually it does, and that's how mm -hmm. you get these people that don't obviously sound the same. Yeah, she said she don't think the typical song isn't. I don't know. I think our typical man song isn't mainstream. It's 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 really it's close. not. It's it's almost there. Like because when you got artists like Blueface, the whole Bay movement, you know they've been copying us since Days Low with Try Me in 2016. You know it's been it's been changing and and it's getting there. But it's 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 charting now. That's the thing. It's on the billboards. Yeah. It, it's on levels of uh media that we haven't seen before you know it's it's music videos on bet with detroit artists and MT, you know what i'm saying so the the possibility to become mainstream and be the number one artist is like it's wider now there's a greater chance yeah. for that now it is even if it didn't like when you say mainstream what what do you say you saying like on the radio in yeah. other states yeah right and it's actually good like they actually want to play it not like you just had a friend play because you got the plug. Like, is people actually requesting this? People listening to right. it? Is you know it is. So yeah, I agree. At first, it, the sound was not mainstream, and I, honestly, I think that's why Doughboy's Cash Out is such a brick wall because they couldn't penetrate the mainstream. They wasn't able to get that success because they 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 had the solid Detroit sound. But you like you did say, Dej Lo kind of broke it a little through. T Grizzly took that shit through the yeah, book again. And you gotta give it to them because you got I don't, you gotta give it to them. They they collectively they have brought Detroit to the forefront. To right. the, without a doubt. And and hell of a really took it through the roof with the with the Meg the Stallion beat because that song was right. fire. I love that song. And I I was I gotta state that there are tons of Detroit artists or born in Detroit artists that have national um, recognition that we don't necessarily popularize. Like we've been there before. You know, we got artists like B Major, Dwele, uh, and, and so many more, what? so many more that have had national recognition prior to the, <laughs> the rap artists that are starting to come up now. So, you know, we, we must acknowledge and shout out those artists as well who have been in the scene yeah. and are behind the scenes. The writers that we got, some of the other producers we got, we got the Olympics, we got so many more that are, you know, putting us in a position to help us win because, you know, we are like keeping it at home. You know, Big Sean, obviously, yeah. you know, has been bringing, Definitely. pulling people up a little bit here and there, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so we can't sleep on that aspect. Like, I, I, we get it, you know, we got some of the hood artists Finally, get some recognition. You know, I yeah. swear it's on Motown. We got um, who else? Like, it's, it's so many artists in so many different lanes. But I feel like we got to stop putting Detroit in this box. Get Detroit out of this box and understand that we have so much variety. Like, we yeah. we, we can't just say Detroit sound. We just got to acknowledge Detroit as a whole right. at this point. We got to be like Detroit art. Anybody got Detroit in their name? Bam. I don't think Lizzo's from Detroit. But <laughs> you know, you know they born and grown or some shit. But whatever, you know, she more more like me, like raised in Texas or something. They said, yeah. She's but she's a different type of character. I'm a fan of her. Yeah. Um, Sada baby, my said, nigga Sada baby. You know, we was he doing in the same parties, bro. I got this nigga. I got some of this nigga first songs. You know, from 
when he was doing parties with the Flyboys and all this other shit right. from Harpo's and other little parties. You know what I'm saying? So niggas have grown and we, we getting that recognition now. I, oh, half a million followers, bro. We, we out here. I agree. I definitely agree. DJ Good Boy, I do want to thank you for joining us. I want to thank you for your music expertise because you definitely always come with the fire. You definitely come um, very knowledgeable about the music scene in general and definitely, definitely specialize in Detroit music. So I'm always grateful for that. I thank you for joining us. I thank you for holding down the fort while I had to go tend to mommy duties um, on today's episode. Sure. Speaking of people who support Cash Out, we're going to talk. Yeah, and I'm, I'm mad I, I didn't say it, but yeah, Cash Out is Definitely. Cash. Um, yeah. And most importantly, I want to thank you for our followers, for you guys being so engaging today. Um, DJ Good Boys, anything else you want to say before we wrap up today's episode? Love your friends, support your people, and help put people on. If you don't want to be a hater or looked at as a hater, just show some love, share some flyers, comment on some people's stuff, man. Go to some and events. All... What you mean, Big Sean ain't from Detroit? Okay. Oh, what? what? She about to start a whole nother No, we're not. Up. <laughs> You're not gonna do that, guys. Okay. I got this, I got the finally famous volume one and two oh. on my laptop. Still, I remember them days, man. Like I got too many people close to me that was close to him in Detroit. But maybe you know some I don't, and I'm gonna shut up. I'm gonna let her end her show. <laughs> and thank you for having me. You know it's great. It's fun. I'm glad you enjoyed this. Episode. Appreciate everybody that was tuning in. Love y'all. You know, for the people who is here, you know, a lot of people we go way back. So we we only moving forward though. Once we get out of this quarantine, nigga, we going crazy. See, and there you guys have it. Um, as always, I do want to thank you guys for joining in. My name is Sherelle. I am the host of Let's Talk, and this ain't a podcast. Bye.